there are three kinds of data hazards possible read after write write after read and write after write the type of data hazard that we had discussed so far come under the category of read after write data hazard here according to the program order instruction i2 is expected to read the data from the register r1 after i1 complete its write to the register r1 means i1 complete its write to the register r1 then i2 can read that data from r1 for its computation this is what the program expect but by making use of some parallelism approaches such as pipelining let this be the initial value of the register R1. In the first clock cycle, we fetch I1. In the second cycle, we decode I1 and fetch instruction I2. In the third cycle, I1 compute the sum of the content of R2 and R3. The value 5 is computed. In the same cycle, instruction I2 will, will be decoded and the operands are accessed from the register. Hence, from the register R1, the value will be accessed, but here the value is 0. The required value, which is the sum of the content of R2 and R3, will be written to the register R1 only at the end of the fifth clock cycle. So, here we are trying to read data from the register R1 before the write. Means, we are expected to read the data after the write and here we are trying to read the data before the write. Hence, these are called read after write data hazard. Now what is write after read data hazard? Consider these two instructions. According to the program order, instruction I2 is expected to write to R2 after read from R2 is done. Mean I1 should read from R2 first. Then instruction I2 can write to R2. We should write after this read. This is what the program expects. But by making use of the parallelism approaches including pipelining, suppose because of some reasons, execution of instruction I1 got delayed and instruction I2 completed its execution first. According to the MIPS 5-stage pipeline architecture that we had discussed so far, this kind of in-order, out-of-order execution is not possible execution of instruction will always be in order hence this is not possible but suppose there is some pipeline architecture in which these out of order executions are possible and due to some reasons this instruction i2 completed its execution first before i1 now what happens i2 will do it right to r2 before this read Data will be written to R2 before data is read from R2. As a result, instruction I1 will read the new value or the incorrect value. So here we are expected to write after this read. But by making use of these kinds of approaches, we do write before the read. Hence, these are called write after read data hazard. So, if we have two kinds of instructions or a sequence of instructions like this, there is always a chance for write after read data hazard with such kind of pipeline architecture. But it does not mean having two instructions like this always lead to a write after read data hazard. There is a possibility of write after read hazard. Next is write after write data hazard. Consider these two instructions. Here we are expected to write to the register R1 once the write to R1 by this instruction I1 is completed. So I1 should write to R1 first, then I2 should write to R1. This is what the program expects. But by making use of parallelism approaches such as pipelining, suppose similar to the previous case, the instruction I2 completed its execution first because of some reasons. Now what happens? Instruction I2 will write to R R1 the value 13. Then instruction I1 will write the value 6 to R1. 
So the final value of register R1 is 6 instead of 13. So in the program, we are expected to perform this right after this right. But by making use of some parallelism approaches, it happens that we do write this instruction before this right. Hence, these are called write after write data hazard. We are expected to write after this write, but we do write before this write. Hence, write after write data hazard. So, if we have two instructions like this, there is always a possibility of write after write data hazard. It doesn't mean it always leads to write after write data hazard. If we observe, we can see that in the read after write data hazard, there is actually a data flow dependency. Here, the execution of instruction I2 is actually dependent on the data produced by instruction I1. I1 should produce some data. That data should be used by instruction I2. So, there is a data flow from one instruction to the other. And this dependency is causing the hazard here. Hence, the read after write data hazards are also called true dependencies. But in write after read and write after write data hazard, we can see that the programmer does not intend any kind of data flow between these instructions. Here we need to compute the sum of R4 and R5 and need to store it in some register location. But that register name happened to be the same name used by some previous instruction. And here also we need to compute the value of this operation and need to keep it in some storage location. We need to keep the result of this operation in some storage location. And the name of the storage locations used in both cases happen to be the same. And this name conflict has led to this dependency and hence the hazard. Due to that kind of name dependency, if some situations like this can occur, then it will lead to an incorrect situation or data hazard. Hence, these two dependencies are called false dependencies. Here, there is no flow dependency. These are false dependencies. Also, read after write dependency is called flow dependency, write after read dependency is called anti dependency, and write after write dependency is called output dependency. In the MIPS 5 stage pipeline architecture, when instructions are issued in order and the instructions switch between the phases or the stages in each clock cycle, then a write always follows a write and a write always follows a read. Hence, only read after write dependencies will exist there. The other two kinds of dependencies doesn't exist.